Hey everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. Welcome to my Fluid Art channel. Today I am doing something a bit different and taking a break from Fluid Art. Uh, this is basically a continuation from video number 494, which was a um, Fluid Art company had a collaboration. Uh, we called it the Switcheroo. And I had done this painting uh, and added the silhouette of these hills or mountains. And this painting has been sitting in my studio for a little over a month now. And while I liked this iteration better, I still was a bit buggered by how flat the uh, silhouette of those hills looked to me. I felt like there wasn't enough or there wasn't any um, highlights or shadows or any sort of depth. It was very, very flat. They were shiny, but it was very flat. And so I thought uh, today I would go in and try to add some depth and highlights and shadows. And at first I had this idea where I was going to make these snow-capped mountains, which is what I start to do. And then later on in this video, I kind of gave up the ghost on that um, because I didn't feel like these mountains were all that big. They're kind of set back in the distance and um, really like the idea of having some fog and some water splashes uh, instead near the base of those mountains. Um, this was a big learning process for me. I learned a lot about myself as an artist, particularly with paint brushing, on acrylics, uh, as you can see, I'm wiping away things with water there. The one thing I did discover that definitely oil paints have the advantage is that oil paints are transparent, so blending them is much, much easier than it is with acrylics. And acrylics dry so fast, so trying to do um, this on a dry canvas even though I have water and very fluid paint and a very wet paintbrush, uh, it definitely was more difficult. And I found myself having to really um, push hard, particularly right here with that white paintbrush, to remove paint because it would dry so fast. And so I had to learn to work in smaller batches. I also had a newfound appreciation for artists that use those really long paintbrushes so that they can stand back and still paint and see their composition. Um, it was quite challenging. As you can see, part of my face, I'm quite close to the canvas. And when you're that close, it's really hard to see the overall painting because you're so focused on tiny details as I am here. This entire process took me about an hour and a half. This is sped up times three. Uh, I really didn't talk to you guys during it. I was too busy concentrating on it. Um, what else did I learn? I learned that I am blending girl. I love to blend. So every time I would try to make a hard line somewhere, I would immediately blend it out and then realize, no, no, it needs to be a hard line. See right there, I'm blending, 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 because I just really like the soft look of that. But for these mountains, you needed some hard, crisp lines to really give definition. And I catch on to that in a bit in a, later on in the video and realize, yeah, you, you gotta have the hard lines in certain areas. And also contrast with the color, like I kept chickening out with the white and blending my white, my zinc white with my Payne's gray. So I have this like pale bluish color, um, which was fine for the shadows, but it really didn't depict snow or water or anything like that. Um, so I learned a lot about um, how I paint and what my preferences are and to try and break some of my own habits, I guess. Um, yeah, and it was quite determined not to give up. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else you need to know. I'm pretty happy uh, with the final result. The one thing, even though I'm you know, doing a voiceover after this is completed, is I left that pink horizon line 
and I'm I'm really fighting with myself because I love the pop of color, but I think the painting would look better if I blended those mountains into the sea and had it disappear. So it's going to be, you know, part a battle between the technical and just, you know, fun and a pop of color and and per- personal preference. Although it is water, so I could say that's, you know, where the water meets the shore of those uh, mountains in the background. It's a tough call. Um, There I am blending, blending, blending like crazy. And I really, really needed to break that habit. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to put on some music and try to zoom in on parts of this so you can see the details as I go along. And uh, I'll see you for the dried results. Oh, one more thing, and now that I have this zoomed in a little closer, and I'm not so sure you're going to be able to see it, but those hills have a ton of texture because, you know, I'm painting over that bloom cloud there, and all the line work from the bloom cloud is embedded in those mountains, and it gives it a really, really cool textural feel so when I show you the uh, completed results I'll make sure to um, get the light on it so you can see that part so I'm kind of working around that as well Um, initially I thought I would resin this piece just to make those clouds pop even more they're so vivid though I don't think it really needs the resin and I'm worried that the resin would um, diminish diminish those Um, textural parts of these hills that I really want to showcase. So this one will definitely just get varnished um, and probably framed.
right, guys, I'm back with the completed results of this one. The only thing I might do is futz with the pink horizon line and kind of make it blurry like it's sand or something on the edge of those mountains. Um, I had started off thinking I was going to do like white cap mountains with snow, but then as I, I did it and then I you didn't see it on camera, I took it off because... It just didn't look right with all that water around. So I'm like, I went the opposite way and ended up putting, you know, a little bit of snow, but ended up doing water splashes instead. Um, I just felt that was more in keeping with this painting. Let me get in on a close up. So like here where there's like a little water wave between the sky and, and those mountains. I really like the second cove right here. I think it's hella cool. Um, there's like a splash of water like coming up on the rocks, a uh, little bit of snow there, um, same on this one, and then just, you know, tried to make them look as like mountains, and I really liked that the texture from the pour underneath is in the mountains now um, and gives it that craggy look. I think it's hella cool. So yeah, here's the pink line. I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit so it's not so hard and call it a day. I won't resin this one because I don't want the texture to go away. So this one will probably just get like um, a spray varnished for protection and that's about it. Anyway, that's it for me today. Let me know what you guys think. Is it better or did you like it when it was a flat silhouette? Um, two different looks and it was, it was a nice break to do something different for a change. So anyway, please don't forget about the Fluid Art Boutique. The link is in the district description section. Go check out the classes. We hope to see you in Dublin. Until next time, y'all take care. Peace out.